guys, welcome back to the channel. It's Lauren, thank you so much for watching. I hope you're doing well. Welcome back to Scent Sunday or Amateur Scent Hour here on the channel. Today I'm excited because I'm actually gonna be sharing with you some perfumes that I'm thinking about or was. I actually picked the one I'm gonna give my mom for Mother's Day, but I thought I would share with you the fragrances I was thinking about for my mom for Mother's Day. Now, I do think this will be a different video than maybe other Mother's Day type videos out there because I am specifically targeting like my mother. <laughs> I'm coming after her with these fragrances as in I am picking them for her specifically and obviously everyone's taste is different when it comes to fragrances. So if you're looking for more crowd pleasing, sweet florals, that type of stuff. That's just not really what I feel like my mom's into. And so that's not really what this is, but I hope if you're interested in something maybe citrusy or musky or maybe a more clean scent or a no perfume perfume or something like that, then maybe these selections could work for you, for yourself or for someone else out there you might be gifting to. A little bit about my mom when she watches all my videos. So hi mom, I know you're watching this. Hello, I love you. But she is getting into perfumes because I have gotten into perfumes naturally and so she doesn't really have much. I mean, she doesn't even wear perfumes often. I definitely don't have those memories of like my mom wearing perfumes because she does hair and I think she always just didn't want to um, kind of overwhelm anyone with her perfume or anything, uh, being close to them. But I feel like all of these could work in that situation if she wanted to wear them to work or at least most of them. There's a few that are kind of a little bit deeper or spicier or whatever. But I feel like since we've gone sniffing together when she's here and she's smelling my collection, she tends to grab gravitate to more citrusy type fragrances, things with like bergamot in them, um, things that have a lighter, brighter smell to them. I feel like more musky fragrances for like every day, um, things like that. And also I feel like she doesn't like anything too sweet or too floral where, you know, like I don't think she would really necessarily love something rosy or honeysuckle or anything even like that. And I don't think she would like anything, again, too sweet or too fruity even. I feel like she'd wanna be there for that. Maybe that's like a very unique fragrance that she happens to like, but maybe aren't the best categories for me to go. When I'm really trying to find like that one fragrance for her to like start almost her collection or you know, like what she has. So some of the fragrances I know that she's already liked from my collection, I thought I would share those with you. So one is the Juliet Has A Gun, Not A Perfume. This one, when she was in town, I think last, she wore this like every day. <laughs> she would spray a little bit of this on every single day. And if you guys don't know, this is a really nice like musky, perfume. It has Ambroxan, I believe in it. And it smells clean without smelling like fresh laundry to me. It's more of this clean skin scent and I feel like it smells almost just like you smell good. It's something that someone has to be kind of close to you to smell and it's a really great one for every day. So she was wearing this one a lot when she was here. One of the perfumes that I know she would probably like and this one's a little bit different than what I've just described to you. Um, I feel like she does like something maybe that leans more unisex again since she's not usually going super sweet. And I think she would like something kind of woody and dry like that as well And the reason I say that is because I actually gave her my dupe from dossier of the Santal 33 fragrance And she really liked that one I feel like that's one of the ones that she's been using quite a bit in her collection And so keeping that in mind Santal 33 has a sandalwood note, but this is has like a cardamom as well uh, It's a really beautiful fragrance. I mean, it's a very popular one, <laughs> but this also has some cedarwood in it There's like a leather note in here and then there's some violet and iris as well. So a tiny bit of sweetness, but I really find that this one is I think truly unisex. I think some people think it's maybe a little masculine, but I find the magic happens in the dry down actually of this. I think it smells really spicy at first and kind of dry and woody yeah, and spicy to me, but I feel like in that dry down, it's just absolutely beautiful. And this was one she's enjoyed. So that was something I kept in my brain. When she was here last, she also wore Musk Therapy from Initio. This is a citrus. I think there's black currant in here. There's also musk and this has more of uh, it's kind of powdery as well, but it's more of an animalic kind of musk to me um, with those citruses and the black currant is kind of tangy as well. I really love this scent, but I like to wear this more as like a layering scent. Um, and uh, she wore this to a party, like the party I was throwing. So that was her like party scent. And then the last one that she liked when she was here, I got this from my scent bird and we were smelling it together and she really liked this amber scent from Rag and Bone. And I was really surprised by this one because it's a lot deeper deeper and 
just like uh, stronger than what I like picture her to like, like especially going from Juliet Has a Gun to this, I was like, what? This has rum and cognac, it has tobacco and liquid amber, vanilla, plum, bergamot, saffron, oud in it. Like it's quite strong, but this one, she likes a spicy scent, I think. Because <laughs> this one definitely has, I feel like something spicy. I'm surprised there's not cardamom or cinnamon or a pepper note, something in here. Because to me, that's how it reads. But this doesn't read overly sweet even though there's the vanilla and even the plum I don't pick up anything like overly sweet in here. It's definitely balanced in in that realm So um, those are kind of the things I was going off of I was like, oh my gosh Okay, but I was trying to hone in on something that would be maybe a more beginner friendly type of fragrance So I thought I would share with you some of the things I was thinking about when I was trying to pick out which scents I thought she might like and these are also what I feel like if she was here I would have her sniff. I'm like smell this what do you think smell this what do you think like if I was like you know customizing a little smell experience for her these are some of the fragrances I would pick to kind of go from there and narrow in on different categories or what we might want to smell out at a store or something I don't know hope that makes sense I feel like it's definitely a little bit different <laughs> than other videos so uh, I don't know if this will give you tons of ideas but uh, I hope you enjoy the video first on my list is by Rado's Bal d'Afrique and I picked this because I find that this is very similar to musk therapy but um, it's not not so as musky only. I believe this also has the same like citrus notes in this as well as the black currant, um, but I find the musk in here is a little less animalic. It's a little less strong. Even um, with this one, although I'm saying it's animalic and usually a clean musk is different than like a more musky sweaty musk, um, I find that this also has somehow this powdery soapy note as well with it. It's kind of interesting that it's both, but I think this is just a beautiful uplifting fragrance and I can see it working for so many situations. This has that citrusy top to it. It does have some like vetiver in the base as well. Something kind of woody going on. It has some violet, but it's not overly sweet in any way. And I could really see this being something she could wear every single day as well as at night. Like it kind of works for both where it's not too overpowering um, of a signature scent to wear around people, especially if you're in close proximity to them. But also it can hold its own if you were going to go out. And I thought this could be something potentially that she might like for for a lot of different situations. So this is a great one. I feel like the hype around it is is deserved. I like it that much. It's really great. Another fragrance, which I feel like I've been talking about a ton in my videos, is I Am Trash by Etatli Donge. I, it's like I just want to try to like test myself to say that every time, really. Mmm, it's so beautiful. <laughs> I just love this fragrance, but this has apple in it, this has some rose in it, it has some cedar and some sandalwood. It also has ISO E Super in it, and I feel like this is such a light, refreshing scent for, again, every day. I think this works best, unless it's your signature, but in the coldest months, like, Come on, get a blanket on, get something a little heavier. But mm, it's so beautiful, uplifting, again, light, non-offensive, uh, but it still has something going on. And with that apple and the rose, there's a tiny bit of sweetness. I mean, there's more sweetness than a LaCroix, <laughs> but it's it's something like that, right? Like it's more of like a vitamin water than it is like a straight up juice in terms of the kind of fruit notes that you're getting, the kind of smell you're getting off of it. In that way, it's similar to Pear Ink from Juliet Has a Gun where you're getting like that kind of molecule scent with some type of like fruit and floral essence on top. But there's something like translucent about it. There's something kind of airy about it and light. And I love this one. I love it so much. This is also another great unisex one. Sam really loves this fragrance as well. There's almost something to me kind of spicy and peppery coming off, I think from the rose or something, but I, I think this is a beautiful scent. So this is another one I was like considering and thinking about for her. Some more like musky scents. I mean, that's where I was really going with thinking about her. So if you like those musky types of scents, I think you'll find some really good ones to try out or, you know, smell if you haven't yet. This next one's from Skylar. This is Pink Canyon. This is a beautiful sea salt fragrance. It has some grapefruit in it. I believe there's cedar in this as well. And it also has that salt note. This is refreshing in the way that if, I, I think I've mentioned this before, but it's like you're doing this beautiful yoga retreat in light white linen flowy clothes, like you're meditating, but it's right on the cliff of a beach. So 
you're not like in the sand down by the beach. You are on the cliff side of a beach. It's different, it's different. There's still woods around you, you know? You're getting the beach air without all of the sand. There's not as much sand, it's more forest, salty beach air. And I think it's a beautiful musky fragrance. There's definitely musks in here as well. It's a very clean, again, like white t-shirt type of fragrance. And I think this is a standout from the Skylar line. Um, I love Vanilla Sky, you guys know that, but this is probably my top three from them like I like it so much very different than vanilla sky like completely different definitely not any of those like gourmand sweet notes or anything um, again we have those citruses and the musks and it's light and it's airy but there's something really confident about this fragrance as well I like that about it and um, I could see my mom really liking this too and I would say out of all the fragrances so far that I've mentioned that one has the least sweetness there's really nothing sweet about it that grapefruit is a tart nice grapefruit with that sea air and the woody notes you know and that like breath of fresh air. Another kind of musky scent, I put in Glossier U because I feel like this is, maybe if you're out there and, and your mom's the same as mine, like a little energizer bunny who's like ready to hike and has already gotten a million things done before you even woke up, like, you know? That's my mom. This one is, I think, one of the more affordable ones out of here. When I was doing this, I was just picking off of scent, not necessarily money, but this one definitely is one of the more affordable ones out of the bunch. This is one of those powdery, musky, I believe, iris type scents. Those are like the notes listed on Fragrantica. It says musk, powdery notes, and iris, and this one is so good. I actually didn't know how much I'd like this, but I got the Glossier hand cream when that came out and first launched, and I loved the smell of that so much, and then and I was like, oh, that's the smell of the perfume. Like I need the perfume in my life. This is one of those scents that just kind of lingers around and you catch it in whiffs around you. Um, it is close to the skin. I, I wouldn't say that it's like traveling far. It's not projecting a ton. I do think you can leave a bit of sillage with this. Like I, I do find that sometimes, but I guess more if you were near someone and they like whiff, whip their hair, you know, you would maybe smell smell that um, right next to them. So maybe sillage isn't the right word. It's more you're right next to them and you're like creeping on them because it smells so good. This is one of those, again, kind of skin scents, similar to the Juliet Has a Gun, Not a Perfume. Um, it's it's close to that. I feel like Not a Perfume has maybe something sharper to it. There's almost a sweetness, a slight, slight, I mean, it's like so slight. When I'm talking about sweetness here, it is nothing like a cupcake or vanilla or chocolate. Like it's nothing like that. It's so, so subtle. But I feel like the Glossier U has just something slightly sweeter and this one comes off a little bit sharper, I guess is what I would say, like less powdery than the Glossier U. And that's probably also coming from the Iris. I like this though, because it doesn't turn too waxy or too makeup-y, even though it has that Iris and the powdery notes. So I really love this one for, again, a nice clean, a, a white t-shirt scent, a skin scent, something that could be worn every single day. It's non-offensive. Like people are really going to smell it when they hug you and it's going to kind of become synonymous with you. Like that's what these types of fragrances I feel like become. It's like you and the fragrance are become one. Okay. <laughs> that's how this sits on the skin. It doesn't sit on it. It sinks into it. I only have a few more. I feel like this might be a little bit of a shorter, a shorter video maybe for me. One that I more recently bought for myself. This is okay. I'm just going to decide a pronunciation. Let's do lease. It's like we're really elongating the the E's part for the eyes. Let's do that. Lease Bow, okay? This is a really beautiful woody fragrance, but it has a vanilla note to it, but it's not sweet. It's not a very sweet vanilla. And I think that that would be something my mom would enjoy. This is light and airy. This almost has some type of like peppery, again, spicy note. There's tobacco in the top, lots of woody notes. It's a dry wood with that vanilla. And um, I think it's really beautiful. Again, light and airy. This seems like something she'd really enjoy spraying. And how has a little more oomph than some of just the musks that I've been mentioning. So this is one I could see her also quite liking. And it almost is like the non-citrus version with vanilla of Pink Canyon. So if you like Pink Canyon, maybe try Bow out. I think you might like it, but again, it doesn't have the citrus at all in it. A fragrance that I personally don't want in my collection, but when I was thinking of what my mom would like, I was like, maybe she would really enjoy West from Ellis Brooklyn. This is another citrusy fragrance. I think it's blood orange in this. This to me reads orange blossom and like neroli, but it, there isn't on here. I really thought there would be, but 
This has a ginger note in it. There's basil. So there's lots of like aromatics happening. There's something kind of spicy coming off with that ginger, um, but it also has clementine. It has, like I said, that blood orange, there's lemon. There's a little bit of florals in the mid, and then it has some oak moss and vetiver and amber in the base. And so I feel like this is something, it has that little bit of spice. It has that citrus, nothing too sweet, you know, just enough. I really actually think she'd like this. And of course, for the full bottles I'm showing you, those are things that I also enjoy, but I'm sure there are a lot of things that I have like samples of more that maybe I wouldn't and then they'd be even more perfect for her and I feel like this is an example of that where not one I want to spray on me or that I would personally love but I think it has that brightness and that energy that she would want for every day and it's like uplifting but again that spicy note to it is very zingy it's very energizing so Definitely Ellis Brooklyn's West, I think she would like. Last three I wanna talk about. I put in here Malin and Getz, uh Strawberry. This one isn't, the notes on here, they, they mention it being lactonic and sweet and strawberry. I do not get something super lactonic from this fragrance. I just don't, I just don't. To me, I do pick up some of that sweetness and some strawberry, but it's very musky. And I also get something kind of green from this. It reminds me of a green, like, if, if it's a strawberry, it is the strawberry plus the stem plus a little bit of the, the dirt or like the hay that the strawberry sits on. Because did you know that's why they're called strawberries? You put them on like straw? Okay, anyway, this has notes of strawberry and bergamot in the top with some pink pepper. The mid has milk, green notes, and jasmine. And then there's musk, cedar, oak moss, and orris in the base. I think this is a really great fragrance. And I feel like this is for someone, if you are someone who thinks like Daisy is sweet, like Daisy from Marc Jacobs is too sweet and you want something in that realm, I feel like this is the greener, muskier, less sweet version of Daisy. Like it's in that realm, but just cut the sweetness, cut the sweetness out you know what I mean half the syrup <laughs> actually a quarter of the syrup I really like this and I think this is one that she would like while still having a little bit more again than the Juliet has a gun or the uh, Glossier U it'd be like a step up I feel like from that I put this one in here because I feel like it has all those musky elements all that but it does have something sweet and I'm like girl please like sweet stuff because I love sweet stuff I love this fragrance from uh, clean this is the clean reserve skin I got this in the sampler set from Sephora um, so if you're gonna pick it up definitely a great value to do that because this is normally 98 and the set 75 but I just think I mean this is what I've been wearing a lot a lot a lot recently I really love of how this is balanced with the sweetness. There's a praline note in here, there's a salt note, and you can smell that salt, but in such a beautiful way because salt can sometimes go a little sour or a little weird on me, but I find this one to be so comforting and it cuts the sweetness just so perfectly. And I love that the sweetness in this fragrance is coming from praline and it isn't coming from fruit and it isn't coming from flowers, but it's so light. It's so light and airy and in no ways dense or heavy in the way that praline would be in a lot of other fragrances out there, you know? The other two notes that I haven't mentioned in this so far are Tonka Bean and Leather, and I just feel like, man, what a beautiful fragrance, what a beautiful musky fragrance. And I feel like when it comes to something musky and um, kind of powdery and a skin scent, this is definitely where I've been at. And I think that it would be a good one for her to try. And I just would love to see what she'd think. This is more one that I would definitely want her in person to like, hey, what do you think of this? Like, mm, do you like this? Because I love it so, so much. And I feel like it fits, but it's kind of like a little bit of a twist and a little bit different than the other scents. Okay, the last fragrance that I have here is definitely different than everything else. This is one of those deep ones. I'm really channeling her amber love from the Rag and Bone scent and also channeling a little bit more of like things from like Santal 33, that type of stuff. But this is BDK's Gris Charnel. I did get this from Twisted Lily this month for free, which this is on my list. So I was just like, so excited to have this this is going to be mine either way because this has a beautiful fig note in it and the reason i'm putting this in here also is i kind of i kind of know she already likes this we went to a perfume shop here in la in october and this is one of the scents that she smelled and she really did like it and this i can i could see that i think maybe she likes vetiver because i feel like a lot of this stuff has that vetiver in it and i feel like that's something i feel like vetiver can come off almost a little spicy almost a little, I don't know if spicy is the right word, but I don't know, kind of spicy. Anyway, this has a beautiful fig note in it. It has some black tea in it, but there's sandalwood and tonka bean in the base. For me, I pick up the cardamom. That's also given 
loving I feel like a lot of the spice in this so you pick, I pick up that cardamom in the top um, but then there's this fig and I feel like definitely on my skin that fig really develops which I love a fig note it's kind of creamy there's also some uh, iris in here and I find the iris gives this almost like a powdery waxy note as it wears on me. I don't know if you get that. Tell me if you get that. But on my skin, there's almost something, it becomes almost makeup-y uh, smelling to me. I really love it. I think it's so great. The black tea note also has this like buzzing kind of warmth. There's something so cozy about this fragrance, kind of sexy, but not too, like not like unclothed sexy. Does that make sense? It's like you're in a full wool coat walking around, just like you own the place sexy. You know what I mean? That's That's this one to me. It's just a it's a beautiful fragrance and she said she liked it and I could see it I could see why she would like this I wonder if she'd really like Tay Noir as well from Le Labo that seems like something she would like But this is one I would definitely want her to smell again and like see but given that she likes that amber fragrance That was another one. I was like, hmm I think that I would have her smell this if we were going for more of a, a heavy fragrance and more like a fragrance with a little bit more character right there like out there for her i do think that this fragrance is kind of best for nights or for uh a little bit colder months not super cold because i feel like in the dead of winter i would want something even a little bit heavier or warmer than this but i definitely think for like night times date nights that type of stuff beautiful scent i'm so excited to have in my collection of course you guys already know i have a code of twisted lily i'll leave it down below and a couple of these other fragrances i think you can get on twisted lily as well so i'll leave that as well and you can always try them and sample them too if you're interested but this would be my like darker deeper fragrance that I think I would have her smell but like I said from the beginning I already picked the fragrance I'm not gonna mention it here because I don't want to completely ruin the surprise and it's not like she has the input sorry mom <laughs> I already got it I already did it and I think it's a really good one for starting off her collection and one I think she's actually gonna get a lot of wear out of and so yeah let me know what you think I picked up for my mom down below but I would love to know which one of these are your favorites if you have any other suggestions that kind of fall in line with these citrus musky um maybe even kind of spicy type of scents i'd love to know what you like or other fragrances that i could look into that'd be so amazing i hope you enjoyed the video i know it was a little bit different i have a fig video definitely coming up which spoiler this one's definitely gonna go in oh such a good fig scent anyway i have a fig video i want to do next and i think i'm gonna do the ellis brooklyn those are like the two next ones on my list but i also want to talk about some challenging fragrances um i feel like there have been i'm, I'm changing my scent a little bit lately and some fragrances that I initially was kind of on the fence about or didn't like I'm kind of like what the fuck's happening I kind of like you and there's also just some fragrances that I feel like I should like but there's just something holding me back so let me know if you want to see that first or if you have like a preference on those videos let me know but those are kind of the the three in my brain that are going to be coming up soon hopefully but um anyway I hope you enjoyed the video thank you so much for watching and other than that I will see you in my next video Bye, guys.